I love typing. Like, a lot. After a childhood of online games, a couple classes on typing, and a short career as a freelance typist, my speed is about 100 words per minute. That's not even close to the fastest out there. But despite my familiarity with today's QWERTY keyboard, I realized I knew very little about where it started. How do we get QWERTY? What are the alternatives? How fast can I type using a different keyboard layout? Let's find out. This story begins in the 1860s. An American man named Christopher Scholes, who would later invent the typewriter, created a piano-like typing machine with this character layout. The letters were almost entirely in order. Seems pretty intuitive, right? But there were two major problems with the first iteration of the typewriter. The first problem was that the metal bars the letters sat on would jam if you pressed two neighboring characters simultaneously or one right after the other. Secondly, the printing point was placed underneath the paper carriage, so you couldn't see the text as it was being printed without having to raise the carriage. This was especially problematic and time-consuming when the typewriter jammed. About four years later, Christopher Scholes came up with this layout. Now some people say Scholes and his associates, in an effort to avoid jams, specifically split up pairs of letters that commonly followed one another, called bigrams. Others dispute this, citing the neighboring E and R keys that remain on the QWERTY keyboard to this day. Some believe it was actually feedback from telegraph operators that ultimately shaped the layout. Regardless, Scholes and James Denmore worked tirelessly to improve the design, creating over 30 different models in the process, until arriving at the layout that would become the 1873 Scholes typewriter, marking the first appearance of QWERTY. That year, gun manufacturer E. Remington & Sons bought the manufacturing rights for the Scholes typewriter for $12,000. That's over $250,000 in today's money and they released the typewriter, calling it the Remington. You might have noticed there's no zero or one on any of these layouts. That was done to simplify the design and to reduce costs for manufacturing and upkeep. Typists of the time would simply type an I for a one and an O for a zero. To create punctuation, typists combine characters. An exclamation point is made with an apostrophe, backspace, and a period. In the five years that followed the sale, Remington made a few more changes to their keyboard layout, including the addition of a shift key, and released the Remington No. 2 of 1878. This was like the Model T of typewriters, even before the Model T. And please look at this Remington ad about an old man who thinks this woman is playing the piano. You'll notice there are still no 1 and 0 keys. Some typewriter models wouldn't add a 1 and exclamation point until as late as the 1970s. While many other typing machines were invented, the QWERTY layout remained consistent. Despite its reign as king of the keyboards, QWERTY has its drawbacks. For example, while thousands of words can be typed with just the left hand, only hundreds can be written with just the right. Also, despite almost every word in the English language containing a vowel, all vowels except A are located on the top row, requiring the fingers to move away from the home row constantly. The average typing speed is around 30 words per minute, or between 50 and 80 for a professional typist. The fastest verified typing speed ever recorded is 216 words per minute by Stella Pajunas Garnand in 1946 using an IBM typewriter. QWERTY isn't the only keyboard layout out there. If you'd like an alternative, check out the Dvorak keyboard created by August Dvorak in 1936. The most common letters are located on the home row, meaning about 63% less finger motion than with QWERTY. I was curious, so I tried it out, and honestly, it's pretty great. As you can see my first time using it, I was pretty slow, but it felt so much more ergonomic, and I was determined to familiarize myself with the layout to see how my speed might increase. Let me tell you, it's a learning curve. But I get the appeal. If you'd like to try out a different keyboard layout for a while, check out your computer's keyboard settings, and consider buying an actual keyboard or keyboard cover. Unless you're down to pick your keys off and swap them around, that's the best move, honestly. So next time you're trying to seem cultured, you can tell people you only use a Dvorak or Colmat keyboard, and they can say, huh, that's weird. <laughs>